Hi guys and welcome back to Jim Fan at Wine Mastery. We've got a really special treat for you. Al's going to talk about this new exciting gin you'll be really wanting to know about. We'll see you in a second. Hi, so we're with Al and Al has created in, in association with Divine a fantastic new gin that we're just about to taste. Uh, but before we get that, let me introduce, this is... John Murphy. And of course... Earl Crabtree. And John Lightfoot, as if you didn't know. So, Earl, before we get into the actual sort of gin and tasting it, I wonder if you could just give us a backdrop of, I mean, you didn't just wake up one morning and say, oh, you know, I think, I think I'll start and create a, a gin that I can go out and market. I'm sure that wasn't where you were uh, started. And actually, you know, your physique, you don't exactly look like a distiller, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to generalise distillers, but um, no, I don't come from a distilling background, um, but obviously I've been an ex-rugby league player, which is um, where the size does come in handy. Um, I've had a few drinks in the past where we're celebrating or commiserating, and um, I've always been a bit of a gin fan, and then um, I became real good friends with Ray Woolhead from Divine Gin, the House of Divine, and uh, we sort of hit it off and started doing some events together, and uh, eventually, one evening, after me, be a couple too many divines decided to come up with the number eight gin and that's uh, where it all began it all began so you actually you actually your career was as a rugby player that's where you st you left school and became went into professional rugby is that what happened yeah i signed for Huddersfield giants and uh, i was 17 years old it was on my 17th birthday i left school and went straight into playing rugby league professionally and uh, retired two years ago so i played for 18 years played 423 times for the giants wow. 18 times for my country wow and um, i was inducted into the hall of fame so I was the first player for 22 years to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And the number I played for the majority of that time was number eight. That was on the back of my jersey. And that's yeah. the uh, the drink is called? So less, yeah. Okay. So that's where, where that connection is. So obviously, you know, you, you had discussions and you've, you've said, obviously, that you, you were had a few drinks, I presume, after, after I, I understand that rugby players tend to drink after a game. Is I've, that correct? I've heard that. I've heard it. Yeah, it's a vicious rumour, but sometimes <laughs> it, 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 it does happen now and again. I might start playing rugby. <laughs> <laughs> nice, uh, <laughs> I think I'll just wait in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, how did you go about uh, deciding what the taste was going to be? I mean, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of competition out there. So, and, and uh, I mean, was there a particular market or a particular uh, type of person that you were trying to attract or, you know, you could imagine enjoying the drink and um, well to be honest with you obviously with with me and my reputation of, uh, around Huddersfield we knew it'd be sort of more of a rugby league sort of uh, local community sort of um, uh, audience that I'd be trying reaching out to and um, with Ray in the background Divine Gin they already had their main recipe which is more of a savory taste okay and off the back of that I kind of wanted more of a sweeter one so we decided that would fit in more in line with what he'd already had and so when we did events together as well we could actually work alongside each other and uh, try these different drinks out and um, I, we, we majority of it was more of a citrus based uh, gin which is really what I wanted the orange flavor which okay. is kind of the uh, main flavor the main notes that come off the back of it so presumably there was uh, I, I guess it may not have been but a, a drink that you uh, enjoyed drinking another gin that you quite enjoyed and you so that was sort of giving you, you want it like that but maybe a little bit more or citrusy or orangey was that where you went or did you just literally say to Ray I, I want it orangey I mean I, I don't know what I'd say to Ray if I was asking him to do a, a, a gin I, I don't know where I start to be honest I'll be honest with you it comes off the back of what I garnish my, my gin with so okay. every time I have a gin and tonic and it will be with Ray's as well I tend to use an orange okay so I just get that little note of orange anyway yeah. so that's where it naturally comes off the back of it was never something that I, I'd never had another gin where I thought I want it to be like that yeah it was just every time I had my gin with a big wedge of orange I could taste that yeah and I thought you know what? that's perfect that's, that's, that's just I'm. right for you to and that's taste. how it works as well because off the back of uh, Jin's you know <coughs> sorry Ray's base recipe which he's got for his divine which is 
lovely, lovely flavour. Um, again, being that more savoury flavour. And um, when we started to strip it back a little bit and then put the orange in after, it really worked well. It took a little bit of playing with as well because, um, you know, it's not quite that simple. And uh, Ray, I'll tell you yourself, and uh, a bit of symmetry between mine and his. He has 36 recipes that he went through. Uh -huh. He chose the number eight. Okay, uh, right. And ironically, the number yeah. I played was number, number eight, eight, and that's where it comes from. Uh, okay, yeah, well, I can see. Yeah, there's, a, there's a brilliant link, <laughs> isn't there? Yeah. So, you've, you've, how long has this? So, you've actually been selling it for how long now? It's probably only been about six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah. We're really at the front <laughs> of the curve here, guys. Really at the front of the curve. Yeah. So, six weeks. So, presumably, you're just literally just starting to get it into stores and just starting to get it into bars, I guess. Yeah, we are, we are, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. I've, um, I've been a rugby player, I know quite a few of the bars, and I've um, <laughs> um, got a, a really good sort of reputation again around who's who's been not a bad person. So I've always right. tried to be a role model in everything I've ever done, and um, I, I think that's sort of gone down well. It's been taken in a really good way. It could have gone another way, you know, with you representing a brand, which is especially our calling, talking about sportsmen. Um, I, I wanted it to be right. And, yeah. But, um, I'm really proud of what we've achieved and all the bars and um, some of the uh, wholesalers are starting to take it on as well it's oh, really fantastic. quickly but the fans have really taken to it you know rugby league fans in general not yeah. just uh, the local ones not just Huddersfield fans but all over the country and yeah it's, um, it's it's kicking on quite nicely a bit quicker than we thought actually um, but that's all we ever wanted and um, it's you know as it says on the back of it, it's you know it's born to stand out, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. Well, I can imagine it being in a lot of uh, rugby clubs, uh, a lot of behind the bars, because it's like from one of their own, isn't it? So. Uh yeah, and uh, the thing is with rugby and more sports is uh, the lads look after each other, you put your bodies on the line for each other, and um, I think that's represented in what we do and the way we sort of um, distribute this as well. Everybody looks after each other, we're all friends and we all try and do the right thing. And I found that about the gym world as well, that there isn't many enemies out there, they're all looking after each other and want uh -huh. each other to succeed, and um, it's part and parcel of working a team, which is something I've always done. Okay, yeah, well, it's great. Well, perhaps we, perhaps we could get to actually tasting some. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, I like that. The, the really, the really, really <laughs> John, this is, your, this is your time, isn't it? No, no, I just want to taste it. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get, let's, let's get to, to tasting it. Are you going to do the, uh, the, yeah, yeah. the, the point? We're going to just taste it neat to begin yeah, we'll with. Yeah, we'll try it neat first. And, and, then, and then we'll try it with a, a, splash, of, uh, a splash of tonic. Okay, are we, are we um, having any particular tonic with it, are we? What would you, what would you what normally would you tell me? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm um, a bit of a... <laughs> A bit of stickler with this because I like to obviously taste the new gym with just a plain tonic or uh -huh. a yeah, slimline yeah. just simply because you taste the flavour a little bit more. Yeah. Otherwise I would recommend you go with a Mediterranean tonic which uh, is a bit sweeter obviously and um, tends to go down really nicely. Okay. Well, no, that's fine. I mean, we're, we're, I, I'm certainly of the same uh, same camp as you in terms of saying, you know, that the distillers put all the effort behind it. Uh, so let's taste the gin, let's not taste the tonic. So okay. uh, let's... Uh, I'm not getting orange on. I was expecting to get a full whack of orange there. <laughs> well, that's the juniper comes through, isn't it? It's juniper, yeah. I'm but it's very I'm difficult yeah. on, the, on the ten anyways, you need to get it. Let's, let's just yeah. drink. Let's just drink. Mm -hmm. oh, sound advice. Talk mm. us without. Well, obviously, straight away, you can uh, you know that there's... Oh, well, it is what it is, it's juniper and coriander. Yeah, yeah, that's always the predominant one, isn't it? It's, um, I, I can always taste the cinnamon, which is, uh, for me, is a strong flavour for me. It's something I taste really strongly. Right. Really licorice. Uh, catch you about these, so the peppery sort of taste in the... I'm um, getting the peppery. Pepper. Yeah. yeah, and then hopefully that's when you do get a hint of orange. The, the orange isn't meant to take over the gin. It's just right. meant to be there at the back end. And that's it. Like a nice uh, little flavour off the back of it, so it tastes that little bit sweeter. Okay. Rather than that, leave, leaving that really savoury taste on the end of your tongue. Yeah. Um, it's not meant to be a flavoured... Gin. No, 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 no. I know what you mean. Just yeah, yeah, gin. yeah. No, no, it's a gin. Um, yeah, yeah. Rather than, you'll rather than. Get that, but obviously yeah, when you start yeah. Garnishing it as well. Yeah, of course. Really yeah, it complements it. Another, another well, it doesn't make ma massive difference, does it? You're mm. both trying to kind of garnish. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting that pepperiness. It's nice tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, I, nice. yeah. yeah. I mean, it's also quite smooth as well. You know, like Ray's original gin. The, this divine. I don't like it to burn, you're not on the alcohol burn, you want it to just nicely warm you. Yeah. yeah. Because some can be really harsh. Yeah. You can, especially when you're drinking, obviously, neat gins, they tend to be really harsh at the back end of it. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I did want that, and you get that tingle, like say, on your tongue, and that yeah. comes a little bit later on as well, mm. um, which seems to go down ni nicely, but obviously. Mm. What, what is what is it in terms of proof? Is it 
40 percent yeah. yeah so again i, I mean to begin with i took a, a really sort of big mouthful because uh, i'm not driving tonight so i was able to um <laughs> it's gonna be interesting so um and it, again you know that just taking out that point on it being nice and smooth it was you know mm -hmm. it went down it's nice it was warm but it wasn't it wasn't fierce mm -hmm. and, and afterwards again on, on as it went down there wasn't that horrible burn sensation you can get with some that haven't been uh, filtered in quite the same the same way so no, i can drink that i mean i do i do like to drink gin's neat anyway i like just a block of ice like you would do with a, with a whiskey and i always say it's, it is the telling of a good gin if it doesn't have that kind of soapy licorice yeah. flavor that sits on your tongue and it's really cloy this this doesn't have that it's nice and no. clean fresh and peppery i could drink it i'm going to drink mm. it that's a good start mm. yeah so should we do, go on, sorry so i was gonna say so should we do a little bit blah, 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 and, yeah. and then have a uh, drop of tonic in it? Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a plan. Blah, 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 voila, tonic. Ah. <laughs> magic, <laughs> magic, that. Magic. <laughs> right, let's go for it. Oh, wow, yeah. Now, I'm getting a smell that I wouldn't expect, right? And it's not going to be the taste. But, you know, sometimes when we're talking about wine, when John's talking about wine, he talks about strange things like uh, Savion, uh, Long having uh, cat's pee in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Riesling having petrol. Yeah, yeah. Careful with your words. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My other words are very close. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got I, it, what, the, the scent coming off is like a new. Uh, it's really strange for me. But this is what it's connecting with in my brain. It, it, it's not going to taste like that. It's, it's like a rubber tire. A rubber tire. <laughs> Can you get? A, not a rubber tire, or like um, you know when you have scale electric and it's skidding. Um, I, I was a poor child. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's not. How are you, what are you getting? What, 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 are you, what are you getting? I don't know. It, 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 it takes away the alcohol because a lot of time when you get your face into a kind of glass yeah. and it, 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 it's just the pure 40%, the alcohol kind of covers Actually, a lot of stuff. Now. So that just. It's a, it kind of just lets more come through. Yeah. But I'm not getting scale no, I'm extra. not now. All right. <laughs> Is it possible the car's just gone back? It's possible. <laughs> Let, let's have a slow. It's just my mind works in strange ways. <laughs> mm, that's nice. If anything, it's, it's, um, it's obviously softened it slightly, but I was expecting it to make it feel, uh, taste much more watery, and it hasn't. It's just sort of nope. very rounded, very, uh, it's still very robust, isn't it? I can see a bit about this, this sweetness at the end, though, as well. That, that, that has really taken off any alcohol. I mean, it didn't have an alcohol burn anyway, but it was. It's taken a lot of that off. It becomes much softer. But then that's when we get these dangerous games, isn't it? When that comes too easy to drink when you've yeah. got it like that. But it's still holding its own there against the tonic. I've done, nice. that, I've done like 50 50 on mine. Yeah. I just wanted a little bit of tonic. Me too. Yeah, I think you... obviously you put a little bit more, which I've just done exactly that. And it does get even sweeter as it sort of uh, goes through. And then obviously that tingle on your tongue even it just it lessens. So I suppose it is. I can try that now. Yeah. <laughs> Is what you want, I suppose. It's just a, yeah, that's the beauty of it. So we've we've tried this. This is with Swepps, isn't it? Mm. And is it just Swepps normal? Seventeen eighty three. Wow, that's that was one. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Is it? Is it an old bottle? <laughs> <laughs> so why have we chosen? Why have we chosen the Swepps? Well, Schweppes actually have come out of this one, this is the 1783, which uh, is going down really well with uh, most drinkers now. So they're either going with, um, obviously, with the Schweppes yep. or the Fever Tree, but it's holding its own, which I don't think it has done previously, but it's really stepped up its game. And uh, this goes down really well and becoming more popular all the time. Yeah, well, I did, I did read about it a long, long time ago in our trade magazines, and they were saying, you know, Schweppes seem to have kind of be gone under with it, but now they're, they're coming back. And did they first sort of start doing this online? only or something you might not know but that's as far as i read but so this is now making a comeback then yeah yeah without a doubt it's been pushed into more places more places are taking it on now and before i don't think they'd even sort of entertain it but i think they've really rebranded yeah they've really worked on the recipe as well and you can just tell by the flavor you know when you're drinking cheap tonics because after it you, you have that aftertaste yeah uh, that clagginess whereas uh, the schweppes now with, along with the fever tree are really competing as the two um main um, parties when it's coming to drinking this gin or any gin. Okay. I've, I, because I knew you wouldn't be able to, so I've, I've, I've taken the, the role of testing the length because I knew that you wouldn't be able to stop sipping. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's very good, it's still there. It's still yeah. there. The taste is still there, still holding. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's a, it's a nice, fresh, it's, there's no, you know, there's no sort of that 
bitter aftertaste. No, well, I've just noticed that putting a bit more tonic in there, how that's really, really, that to me almost becomes a soft drink, yeah. if you know what I mean. That, that, then it's dangerous as that. Very dangerous. Oh, I'm, very I'm dangerous. not complaining. And if you look closely, you do not see a one trace of rubber tire, which is not as great to I'm pleased to say I can't taste the rubber tire, but it wasn't no. in a nasty way. It, it's like just these these edges, these edge smells you sometimes get that just link something in your mind. So uh, yeah, no one else is going to smell it. It's, it's, no, but it's, it's, a, it's a very subjective thing, isn't it? That's why you know if we all like the same thing, we'd only have one bottle of gin. You know? Yeah, it is all very subjective. What some people can smell, we said on on the wine videos, what some people can smell, other people can't. Mm. So it's that relationship then, obviously. You know when people smell like sun cream, and it just reminds them of holidays. Yeah, That's what it triggers in your brain. Of course, like, yeah. It? Okay. Yeah. Are we happy to try with uh, another topic? Well, I think we should, obviously, well, normally we do it with, so in a fair comparison, uh, well, normally we do it with Fever Tree, so that we can compare it to the others that we've, a few others, as you know, we've tasted. Then, then uh, let's do it with, let's do it with Fever Tree, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Blah. So, having done the technical bit, we've now got tonic. And this is your second recommendation after, your first is, is the sweats, the, you know, nice and easy on the, but this one is the Mediterranean, which uh, you feel also, adds to the uh, yeah this one definitely it. Um, sweetens it up but with more floral botanicals in the actual mediterranean this time which is uh, it's a really popular one to have with most gins these days but it really does taste quite nice and just uh, takes it to a different level and a slightly different flavor but it's it, it's, it is beautiful yeah okay okay mm. Mm. i see what you mean it does sweeten it up yeah it does make it quite a different drink, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's it's, it's yeah. quite it's strange how that's changed. that's changed quite massively just yeah. from the tonic. The, yeah, the sweetness comes from a lot. I mean, I just say the floral as well. Yeah. That is that yeah. is a different. That's a different drink almost. It's the floral mm. flavors are really quite strong. Mm. And they, they really uh, stay with you. I think after you drink it, the sweetness almost goes on a floral mm. taste there, there, which is quite unusual. I'm surprised how how different it is. You know, it, it just goes to show as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Mm. And it's almost like having been have, having. Uh, one one of those bottles and two bottles of tonic. You got two separate drinks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Oh, I don't know which one I'd prefer. What? You know what we always say? One. It's a mood thing. It is a mood thing. Yeah. yeah. So it depends where you where you mood. I think that, that that would be more. I use this this little sort of uh, on the lawn. On the lawn. <laughs> on the lawn. And you the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one would be by the fire. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I I I think I. would like to drink that neat, just neat. By the fire. For me, yeah, yeah, that neat bit on the, on the fire. Because for me, I think, it, although I like it when you, you, you soften up, and that would be more like a kind of long drink or a, 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 almost that soft drink, I think I'd like that just neat again, you know, where it does tingle your, your lips and your gums. and you yeah. But again, it's a mood thing, isn't it? Yeah. So this is more of a barbecue drink for me. Yeah, just that kind of nice the sunny. Family, yeah. Yeah. Really sunny, it just um, tastes a little bit more. Um, like a pop as, as it were you know like a bit of a punch yeah you get that sort of um, it is but, but then you're still you're still looking 40% of there aren't you <laughs> yeah exactly you don't want to mess about no, 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 no. no, no. You, would, you would need to have a reasonable amount of tonic well, so that those two are fantastic. Well, well, well done. So, in, in terms of be, people being able to get hold of uh, the gym, where where do they need to go? Where is it currently available? It's uh, currently uh, available in, in around Huddersfield, still, a couple yep. of different places, um, which we can sort of um, show people later on. But also, Divine the Divine website itself. Okay. Um, I think if people go onto there, look for Divine Gin, yeah. and they will get to the website, and there's um, a few different Divine Gins on there, and uh, as well as my own as well. Okay. So that's the easiest way to get hold Answer. of it. Okay. Although if you're in Huddersfield, these are quite a few parts. Well. Yeah, so and I, I guess if you've only been doing it for six weeks, it's obviously it's going to be changing day on day almost. So uh, yeah, so we can we can keep updated with that. But yeah, I'll put the link. Uh, uh, to Divine's uh, website uh, below and uh, try and find the page so I can take you straight to it. So if you fancy trying one of these uh, beautiful, ignore my tire thing, that was just me, <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> But they are beautiful, they are very, 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 very sophisticated gins. Um, and um, actually I would, I would, you know, this is my perception and, and as you guys know, I'm not a sports person, uh, but, but surprisingly sophisticated if I may say so. <laughs> Big lunch, I know. I know. Leave, leave it, man. Leave it. Let <laughs> <laughs> well, it go. I've still got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Until he's come down on Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, delightful. Delightful. And so, till next time, we look forward to seeing it. Oh, thank you very much indeed for your time yeah, and you, uh, for presenting your gin. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Guys, until the next time, we'll see you there. Chin chin. chin.